Hello everyone, good morning. Today is 12th of June and I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. So guys, let's start with the video and first of all, I hope that the sound is clear as well as the video is also visible. Now in today's video, we are going to discuss entire analysis of Hindu newspaper, all the articles along with the background we are going to see. And you can also download the explainer notes of this particular session from our telegram channel. The link for the telegram channel is given in the description box in YouTube. Okay, so you can download the PDF. Now, first of all, we'll take the overview of entire newspaper so that we can understand that which articles are actually important in the today's newspaper. So let's take the um, overview first of all. So first article guys here, the cookies to boycott peace panel over the CM's presence. So basically guys, what has happened? We have seen from the past one month that this Manipur crisis is going on. Now this Manipur crisis started when the Manipur High Court, Manipur High Court ruled that the Methi people, Manipur High Court ruled that the Methi people, they can be given the scheduled tribe status. Now the other tribal communities living in Manipur, for example, the Kuki, Zomis, Chin, they say that Methis are already a politically dominant class majority of the MLAs in the state legislative assembly around 40 MLAs they belong to the Metis then they are economically also very powerful they also have a demographic dominance in terms of the numbers so they should not be given the ST status and after that uh, basically they have uh, brought a kind of a uh, there, there, there was a solidarity march that was started and there this crisis began and since then there is this issue is going on Fine. So, there are multiple rounds of negotiations and talks that have happened. So, you are not required to track every such a development in this particular direction. Okay. Then, Cyclone, Beeper Joy set to hit Kutch, Gujarat gears up. Now, guys, uh, one particular thing, understand this particular thing that now as the monsoons have begun, there are many such cyclones that are going to come. Okay. Understand this particular thing, guys. Every year, this is a phenomena that happens. You are not required to track the Bipper Joy cyclone, its trajectory. In general, the topic of cyclone, anti cyclone is important for your geography examination. And now, guys, understand this thing as this cyclone will be coming, maybe making the landslides. There will be entire one hour videos that will be made on YouTube explaining the cyclone, Bipper Joy, all such kind of a things. But this is an every year occurrence, though many people suffer because of this particular thing, a misfortunate event. But you are not required to go too much in that direction. I hope you understand uh, what I am trying to say. Now moving on in the next uh, page, PM's anti-Delhi ordinance infringes upon tenants of democracy, Kejriwal. Uh, guys, see, this issue has become very politicized. Political dimensions, please ignore it. But if you are following news super analysis regularly, we have taken up this particular article, I think at least 8 to 10 times, what this issue is all about. So basically, guys, the issue started when uh, the issue started as who will control the civil servants, who will control the bureaucrats in the Delhi. Now the central government was of an opinion that the LG, Lieutenant Governor, will control the civil servants and bureaucrats, their posting, their transfer. But the Delhi government said that no, the Delhi government, elected government of Aam Admi Party should control the civil servants and bureaucrats. This matter reached to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court ruled in the favour of the elected government, that is the Aam Admi Party, that they should control the civil servants, bureaucrats, their transfer, their postings, everything of the civil servants in Delhi will be controlled by the elected government. Now, in order to rule this particular thing, what has happened, the government has came out with an ordinance, government has came out with an ordinance and has created a body, fine, to, uh, to control the conduct of the civil servants and this body has three uh, of the people, one is the chief minister and other are the two senior IAS officers who will be, uh, who would be an, um, two senior IAS officers. Now understand this thing, it is being said that further, if any decision is not agreed by the LG, then LG can overturn any decision by this particular body. So at the end of the day, what happened? The power has again been given into the hands of the LG. So basically, the Delhi government and the central government are again basically fighting on this particular thing. And every day, these remarks will be made sometimes by the central government, sometimes by the Aam Admi Party government. No need to track these statements every day. Then guys, we have these political articles, all such kind of a things. 
um, after risking fines during the ban bike taxi riders breathe sigh of relief with high court order so basically guys in the month of the february delhi government has banned these taxi bike taxis for example rapido etc okay so uh, 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 why the reason that many most of the times they are applying on a private number plate okay now a relief has been given to them uh, then guys further moving on after that uh, we have these advertisements and all such kind of a things again the political articles etc have been given no need to go too much in detail here fine we'll directly be reaching to the editorial page now on the editorial page the first article manipur a rude reminder of the northeast tensions again guys those manipur issues that particular thing has been going on which i have explained to you on the page number 1 and i think at least 12 to 13 full fledged editorials articles we have taken already here as well then uh, amplify the subject of adolescent girls nutrition now this is a very good article five star article we'll see this article in detail tell tale signs so maharashtra's low intensity communal violence so recently there was the clashes happened in the kolapur so the details that okay on which date the clash happened how many people got injured how many people have been booked all these kind of things have been given okay then further moving on here on uh, below we have this article miles to go now this particular article is talking about the state of indian economy we'll see this particular article also then governor cannot indefinitely hold back the bills. We'll see this particular article also. Telangana BJP, political article not very much important. Less than half of urban consumers are pessimistic about the economy. Okay. So basically guys, uh, there is already an economy article. I will integrate this thing there. Okay. So basically uh, what has happened recently, the consumer confidence survey, okay, consumer confidence survey was conducted by the Reserve Bank of India. Okay. Consumer uh, confidence survey conducted by the Reserve Bank of India and it shows that what is the belief of the people in the economic performance. So largely, largely uh, urban consumers, they are not very much hopeful, they are pessimistic about the economy. Okay, so basically uh, May 2013 to May 2023, okay, so different different type of people, their expectations have been given here. Now, moving to the text and the context page, guys. So, in text and context page, we sometimes, uh, most of the times, 90% times, we have very good articles. But today, the article is talking about the significance of the Thailand election. Okay. So, basically, who has gained the popular vote in Thai, Thai elections? Why has a government has not been formed yet? And all such kind of a things. Guys, understand this particular thing. That these are the political, internal political issues of the Thailand. You are not required to go too much in detail in the internal political issues of the Thailand. There is no need to go too much in detail here. Secondly, if it would have been the neighbor of India, then we would have even take, go, uh, it would have made more sense to go in the deeper details. But then no need to go, go in this particular article. Fine substance is not there for our exam point of view. Then why are YouTuber creators, why are YouTuber creators account with large followings are targeted by hackers? Okay, so basically guys, we see this particular thing that um, these new vloggers, lifestyle travelers, their accounts are being hacked. Okay, again, moving on for the exam, again, not, not much substance is there. So guys, understand this particular thing. I have told you many, many number of times that the newspaper should not take your entire day. You have to be very much selective with respect to what should be read and what should to be left. And for that particular thing, you have to analyze the previous year questions and secondly, the syllabus. That is the key. Then again, Tamil Nadu should elect over 25 ND MPs as thanks for Sengal installation, Shah. Now here there is this important article, private sector collaboration in India, US defense ties. We'll see this particular article. Fine. Then further moving on in this direction, the entire page is filled with the political articles, etc. Here, uh, uh, Jay Shankar holds talks with German Australian, uh, Australian minister. So basically guys, uh, you might be knowing already and uh, we have also discussed it that this India this year India is chairing the G20 and as India is chairing the G20 so for that particular thing external minister of external affairs and bilateral meets are happening between the different different countries and now the minister of external affairs have held the talks with the Germany Australia and uh, Germany and Australia and these particular talks are to lay the ground for the G20 summit that will happen fine uh, now guys further uh, basically glad to welcome Australian Development Minister, fine naturally we spoke about PM Modi's recent way to Australia, nothing much important is given here. 
Then guys, here there is this important article that is the center to complete 3D digitization of museums. We'll see this particular article. Then coming to the world page, they are coming after you. Trump tells his supporters after indictment. Fine. Nothing important for the examination. Fine. Ex-Scottish leader Sturgeon arrested by police. Fine. Nothing important. Then guys, coming here today, it is Monday. So on Monday, we don't have a business page. We have this money wise page. And it gives, it talks about the investment related, why travel insurance is a must have for a trips abroad. Now, I expect that you UPSC guys are not preparing for any foreign trip. Okay. Uh, then um, guys, we have the sports page and uh, nothing much important. And uh, in the last, you, uh, the Hindu has hidden a page that is the science page. In defense of the anonymous, annoying fruit fly, a test bed for genetic research. We'll see this particular article also. I have not understood that why the Hindu is hiding this paper at the last. Because after the sports page, we usually don't go there. Okay, but yes, we'll take this article also. So this, this is the overview of the entire newspaper. Now, guys, moving to the next article. Oh, now let's discuss all the articles one by one in detail. So guys, in every class, we take the GS quotation and this GS quotation could be used to complement your answers in the examination. And today, we are going to take the quotation from the Albert Schweitzer. So what Albert Schweitzer says, Albert Schweitzer says that ethics is the activity of man directed to secure the inner perfection of his personality. Okay, guys, I might be going to gym, I might be doing some yoga, okay. They, these all things might be to bring the perfection of my outer, to bring the perfection in my personality, particularly the physical perfection I am trying to bring in my body when I am going to gym. Obviously, the internal changes would also be there. But when we talk about the in ethics, ethics is a spiritual activity. Ethics is a mental activity. Ethics is an activity where man tries to ensure inner perfection of the personality. By ethics, person learns virtues. By ethics, person learns values. By ethics, person learns the ethical right and moral conduct. And by learning all these things, inner perfection of the personality will come, which is actually the most important one. We can use this particular definition of ethics for our GS paper number 4, Ethics, Integrity and Aptitude. Topic number 1, Ethics and Human Interface. There we can use this particular idea. So, that is all about it. And now, Moving to the first article, okay. Private sector collaboration is the next great phase of Indo-US defense ties, Atul Kesha. Now, first of all, guys, uh, understand the context of this particular article. Now, first of all, before going in this particular article, let's discuss some of the basic background information. First of all, guys, this article we are going to see with respect to GS paper number 2. We'll see this particular article with respect to the GS paper number 2. The points of convergence, points of convergence between the India-US relation. Now understand this particular thing guys that when we talk about the India-US relations, the relations between these two countries have seen a lot of ups and downs. And there is a very popular saying that the India and US, they have changed from estranged democracies to engaged democracies. How they were estranged democracies? Understand this particular thing that post uh, post the world war 2 you might be knowing that the cold war got started and the world got divided between the us camp and the ussr camp now india never chose any of the camp okay we started the non aligned movement non alignment but always it could be seen that india's tilt was towards the side of the ussr even the treaty of friendship was signed with the ussr by the india in the 1971 so, because the tilt of India was always towards the side of USSR, India-US relations were not particularly good till the 1991, till the collapse of the USSR. However, post-1991, from estranged democracies, from estranged democracies, we have turned into the engaged democracies. Post-1991, India's service exports to the USA increased. India's, uh, basically, the software engineers, skilled personals, traveling from India to US, their number have increased. And today, guys, when we talk about the India-USA, India-USA shares the economic relations and at the same time, both of them also share a very important political relation, how the political relation is being shared. Now, so, so economic relations, political relations, 
there is also the people to people ties when we talk about the h1b visas fine which usa gives to the skilled professional largest number of the h1b visas are being availed by the indian citizens indians are the ones who are giving the impetus to the software industry of the usa and particularly their service sector as well now when we talk about the political ties between the india and the usa relations both countries are the member of the quadrilateral security dialogue indo pacific economic forum okay now in the quadrilateral security dialogue there are the four countries that is the india us japan and australia and the quad is has been created to ensure the rule based order in the indo pacific and to keep china under control now china has become an irritant both for both india and uh, for both the india and the usa at the same time so the quad plays an important role now further how we can improve the relation between the india and the usa right now guys between the india and the usa defense ties are very much important now basically the private sector collaboration between the india and usa on the defense front could be the next low hanging fruit so guys understand this particular thing that when we talk about the india according to stockholm institute peace research institute uh, stockholm peace research institute that is the sipri now sipri releases a report that which countries are the major importer of the weaponries and as per the sipri india has been one of the largest importer of the weapons but now guys india has started up with the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan and under the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan india wants to become the net exporter of weapon rather than the importer which india has been till now and as we are talking about exporting the weapons manufacturing the weapon we have number one the psus the government psus which are manufacturing the weaponries but now slowly slowly the private sector have also entered into the defense manufacturing the tatas mahindras they have entered into the defense weapon manufacturing now basically guys the next logical step between the india and us relation could be this that the defense collaboration defense collaboration should be done just a minute let me change the color of the pen yes so the defense collaboration should be done between the private sector of india and the united states so private sectors could manufacture the weapons and can provide the those weapons to the government of the usa so this this could be the next phase of cooperation for the two greatest democracies on the earth now from the business perspective private sector has been the one where india truly shines particularly after the 1991 lpg reforms the private sector has the one which has been one of the most efficient so therefore private sector can deliver the high quality weapons high quality components with the greatest level of fidelity greatest level of fidelity means the confidence the trust that indians will not breach fine no sensitive information will be divulged to any such other country fidelity loyalty is there timeliness is there and the better price india could give to the us now in this particular direction guys india us defense acceleration ecosystem indus x clear now understand this thing for example when whenever you are writing a answer on india us relations mention these initiatives for example indus x mention this icat okay now what this indus x indus x is a new initiative between the india and usa which is being hosted by the us ibc us ibc stands for us india business council this us ibc is hosting the indus x and here it will be here it will be seen that how the private sector could complement the existing government to government collaboration how the innovative partnerships between the usa indian companies how the us investors can come in india how the startups okay they can contribute find academic research institutions startup accelerators startups all these things all these units will be coming together under the indus x and collaboration between the india us how it can be enhanced such discussions such agreements fine such mous would be signed then further guys recently what has happened uh, what happened recently mr ajit doval uh in, uh in in the month of january on the behalf of the india has also taken up this initiative on critical and emerging technologies that is the icat initiative on critical and emerging technologies now what will be happening here india and usa would jointly be cooperating on many number of things for example for example we would be cooperating on semiconductors we would be cooperating on cyber technologies would be cooperating on the space technologies even the jet engines also 
the technology transfer on such kind of things would, would also be done. So basically under the Indus X, under the ICAT initiative, India US collaboration is already increasing and now the private sector has to be brought in this particular picture. So that is all guys about this particular article. I hope that you have understood it and the background also you have understood it. Now moving to the next article. Center to complete 3D digitization of the museums by year end. We will see this particular article with respect to the art and culture, GS paper number 1 and for the prelims examination also we are going to see this particular article. Now let us see that what are the basic, uh, what this article is actually providing. Now basically guys recently government of India has taken the decision that it is going to create the th 3D imagery. 3D imagery of all the museums that are under the control of the union government. Now understand this particular thing. What do we mean by this word that museums control under the union government? See this particular thing. Guys, there is the Ministry of Art and Culture. Uh, there is Ministry of Culture. Okay. There is Ministry of Culture. Then there is the Archaeological Survey of India. So, there are certain museums which are directly under the control of the Ministry of Culture. There are 10 museums which are under the control of the Ministry of Culture. And after that, there are other, uh, other museums at approximately 44 locations in the country which are under the control of the Archaeological Survey of India. Then there are the museums which are largely under the control of the state government. So basically these particular museums, a 3D image, a 3D map, a 3D 3D, um, 3, 3D profiling would be done. Okay, so basically, guys, the goal of the government is that by the end of by the 2023 end, all the maps, all the museums under the control of the government of India, a 3D digitization will be done. Now, what are the major museums whose 3D digitization will be done? It is the Salar Jung Museum, Hyderabad, the Allahabad Museum, okay, the Indian Museum. Fine Victoria Memorial Hall, National Museum, National Gallery of Modern Art. These are some of the major museums. Now the point comes that why the 3D digitization or why you need to create the 3D imagery of the museum. Now basically guys it will have many benefits. Benefit number one. Benefit number one it can help in the better conservation of the museum. Now understand this particular thing. See from time to time the artifacts that are kept in the museum they decay they decay, they often sometimes uh, they have to be, uh, they, they have to be restored. Now understand this thing that if we have the 3D imagery today, even after 50 years, if they have decayed or if they have to be restored, we can refer to this particular 3D imagery from all the angles that how an artifact looked at that point of a time. So a particular and a perfect restoration of such kind of things could be done, number one. Number two, basically these 3D, uh, 3D imagery of the museums can be used by the visitors to better understand these artifacts. For example, guys, right now there is an artifact that is kept behind the glass. What you can do? You can just see one side of that particular artifact. You cannot see that from all the angles, from all the dimensions, but through these 3D imageries, every artifact could be seen from all the dimensions. You can have a top view, you can have a bottom view, you can have a side view. Okay, so on a computer screen, in a 3D map, you can view it. So it will improve the experience of the visitors. Then thirdly guys, what can be done by these 3D imagery, 3D, 3D models of these artifacts could also be made by the 3D printing. So we have seen that the 3D printing has developed so much. So these uh, basically uh, these artifacts, for example, there is a sword that is kept there. Its prototype, its copy through 3D printing can also be made. Okay, and they could be sold or any such kind of a things they could be used. Now, so this is something. Uh, this can be used. Even it can be used in augmented reality, virtual reality learning experience. Students can learn better when they are going to the uh, museum visit. Now, basically this digitization process, this digitization process, it will involve number one, 3D scanning, 3D scanning of the entire museum and its of artifacts, okay. So the real world objects will be seen from all the dimensions, that particular data, it's uh, then this particular data is to be used to construct the digital 3D models. Okay, then guys further moving on in this particular direction, this entire process is being carried by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and the Jatan Virtual Museum Builder, 
Jatan Virtual Museum Builder, it is a software, it will be used for this particular process. Now this particular software has been designed by Human Center Design and Computing Group, okay, Center for Development of Smart Computing, Pune. Is it clear or not? And these 3D virtual galleries will be available on web, mobile or on the touch screen panels which will be installed into the museums. So this is the 3D, 3D digitization that is happening. Now guys understand this thing that whenever we talk about the digitization, we only talk about the digitization of economy. But what about the digitization of art? So this is a new dimension of digitization that actually you can add in your answers. Okay. Now moving to the next article. Miles to go, miles to go. Now this particular article guys is talking about the state of Indian economy right now. So if you remember on the Saturday, on the Saturday we have discussed one particular article where the chief economic advisor of India said that Indian economy is in a very good shape. Okay, and we are poised or we are bound to grow at a very good pace for next 10 to 15 years without bothering anything. This particular article guys is on that particular line only and we'll see it for the GS paper number 3 issues related to the Indian economy. Now first of all let's understand that what the chief economic advisor has predicted in the context of India. Chief economic advisor has predicted that Indian economy is out of the pandemic troubles, it is out of the pandemic problems that were there. And it is said that for next 10 years at least till 2030. Indian economy will grow at the rate of 6.5 to 7 percent even if no reforms are taken. Now guys understand this particular thing that when we talk about the China, between the period of 1979 to 2008, China has witnessed a continuous double digit growth. Usually guys when an economy is growing, there is an overheating in an economy that happens. Overheating means there will be certain systemic problems that will come, there will be certain structural problems that will come and the economy will start to go down, okay. So many, many factors could be there. For example, we were growing at a very good rate in 2006-07, but then in 2008-09, there was that US, uh, US bank crisis, fine, basically subprime crisis of the US that happened, Indian economy got impacted. Okay, so from time to time what happens there are certain these unpredictable things that come and economies actually are impacted. We call these events as the overheating of the economy and then the economy starts to go down. But it has been said that Indian economy will not see this overheating for next at least 8 to 10 years until 2030 we will grow at least at the rate of 6.5 to 7 percent even no reform is taken up. However, if the government takes certain reforms for example reform for skilling reform for better education, reform for improving the ecosystem for investment, our growth can go even beyond the 7.4%, 7.3% actually. Okay. Now, what are the reasons that Indian economy is going to grow at such a good rate? Number one, there is a strong momentum that has been created. Okay. Now, understand this particular thing guys that basically the world also is now coming out of the pandemic troubles okay so there is a strong momentum see indian indian industry is ready to respond with the supply and the world is now slowly slowly giving up the demand so this strong momentum will help in growth of the indian exports okay then there are the better macro fundamentals macro fundamentals for example the inflation now is under control after more than 20 months then the trade deficit is now also in a reasonable limit Okay. Moreover, the cleaner bank and corporate balance sheets are there. Now, banks always had the legacy problem such as the high NPA. Now, those NPAs have also come down. Corporate balance sheets, corporate losses are also down. Moreover, with the GST digitization also, the Indian economy is becoming more and more formal. Now, you might be knowing this particular thing that 91% of India's workforce, it is involved into the informal sector. But now, more and more formalization of Indian economy is happening. Moreover, it is also being said that the chief economic advisor indirectly has also given a hint to the private sector that private sector you don't worry and you start investing. Okay, because from uh, last 2-3 years, private sector investments have been very much low because the private sectors were not very much optimistic that in which direction the Indian economy would go. So, investments were not made. 
Moreover, it has also been provided this particular thing that uh, this could also be a signal that till 2024 election we should not at least bother about the economy. Moreover guys, it has also been provided that soon we will return to the pre-pandemic times growth rate. But, but here there is one particular catch that you should keep in your mind that returning to the pre-pandemic is not enough. Why? Because in the pre-pandemic, the Indian economy has slid, has went down for seven successive quarters. For seven successive quarters or let's say around two years, Indian economy was going down. So, we need to go above the, the pre-pandemic level. And unless the private sector investment recovers, unless the private sector comes out, it leads the job creation until the youth joins the workforce, fine, the growth would not be able to sustain, fine. So, what will happen? The private sector will invest. When private sector will invest, the factories would be made, industries would be made, youth will come there, they will join as the workforce. When they will join as a workforce, they will get the money. That money they will invest for in raising the demand. Automatically, the cycle of growth will begin. But private investment should come. And here, guys, government needs to be very much careful. For example, imposing the high import tariffs, okay, uh, or imposing so much of compliances on the new business should not be done. Ease of doing business is the need of the hour that the government should focus if it has to attract the private investors. That is all guys about this particular article. I hope that you have understood it. And now we'll move to the next article. In a defense of the annoying fruit fly, a test bed for genetic research. In a defense of the annoying fruit fly, a test bed for genetic research. We'll see this particular article guys with respect to the GS paper number 3, Science and Technology. And even for the prelims examination, we can see this particular article. Now, let's see that what this article is talking about. So basically guys, uh, there are flies, mosquitoes that we think are the most useless creatures. They don't have any, they, uh, they don't have any utility in the nature. We think that these mosquitoes and flies are the most useless creatures. But this particular article guys is telling that these mosquito, uh, these mosquitoes and flies are not a useless creature. They hold a very important role, one thing. Secondly guys. In this particular article, please read only that part that I have given you in this particular notes. Why? Because this particular article is going so much in the unnecessary details. For example, there was the discovery of a single fly with white eyes instead of red eyes. Then there was the, uh, the basically the reproducible maps on chromosomes of the insects were pre prepared in 1940. George Beadel, Edward Tantum discussed the, some gene codes for the proteins in the chemical reactions in the insects okay so basically there is this phd over the over the mosquitoes that has been done for example fine uh, rapid reproduction okay for example morgan was the one who had who, who worked on the dorsophilia okay so the contribution of the scientist in the different different years all such kind of things are being given these kind of things are not at all not at all useful for your upsc csc examination because if you will see the syllabus, you will understand this thing. So guys, not 1% utility. So we, we have to understand the application part of this particular article, what it is talking about, okay, which I had given here in this particular note. Okay, now, basically, when we talk about guys, the fruit flies, fruit flies, okay, when we talk about the mosquitoes, they have been very much important for revolutionizing the biological and medical sciences. Now, the flies and the mosquitoes, the flies and the mosquitoes which have the two wings, they are called as the diptera. They are called as the diptera. Just a minute. Why they are called as the diptera? Because diptera means, di means two, tera means wings. So, it comes from the Greek word diptera, that is the creature having two wings. Okay, now understand this particular thing that they have a very important role to play. For example, the cocoa plants, many plants including the cocoa plants, their pollination is done by these dipteras, these two wing flies, they are responsible for their pollination. And if the natural pollination would not happen, the cocoa production 
would not be able to sustain the world, the, the, the cocoa production will go down. Many of the other plants, their pollination is carried by the flies. Then guys, when we talk about the dead animals, these flies, insects, mosquitoes, they decompose these dead animals also. If these dead animals are not decomposed, then it will lead to a lot of pathogens and all such kind of problems. Now, when we talk about the uh, uh, diptera, that is the uh, flies with the two wings, in that drosophilia, drosophilia has become one of the best understood organism or the best understood fly. Now, this particular, this particular drosophilia, okay, it has, <coughs> it has been emerged, it has been emerged. Okay, fine. So yes, so it has emerged that when the studies on the genes or on the genomes of these flies have been done, then it has been found that the genomes of these flies and the genomes of the humans, they have a lot of similarity. They have a lot of similarity. Basically, a fly and a human, a fly and a human, they have the, a lot of similarities in their genome. Basically, the processes, the genes that are there in these flies, in the complex form, they are in the humans. So, basically, guys, by studying these flies, we can understand the internal or genetic mechanisms within the humans also. Basically, it has been provided that when certain of the human genes have been taken up, and if these human genes could be inserted into these drosophilia, they will be assuming certain functions even in these drosophilia. So, many human genes can even take over the functions of their drosophilia equivalent if they are inserted there. Now, understand this particular thing that carrying the experiments on the humans might not be possible all the time for many of the practical reasons. But the research on these fruit flies is fast, it is cost effective, it is versatile and therefore these flies could be the optimum candidate to understand the human's genetic makeup. Today, we find that the gene cloning has come, okay, gene editing has come. So, first these gene cloning, gene editing could be experimented on these, on these flies and if they are promising, then we can take these particular researches to the humans. Now, guys, for example, when we talk about these flies, see, they are not the mini humans. Now, there is this disease that is the Alzheimer disease. What happens in the Alzheimer disease? In the Alzheimer disease, a person loses all the memory, the person loses all the personality. Now, understand this particular thing, these, uh, these flies cannot tell us that why the loss of personality happened in the Alzheimer, but they can help us to study why neurons die, why neurons die in the disease such as the Alzheimer. So basically it can help to fill many of the gaps that are there in the research and the studies. So therefore, these particular flies can be very much important in understand the human biology, to understand the human genetic structure and all such kind of things. Fine. Guys, I hope that you have understood this particular article. And now, moving to the next article. Amplify the subject of adolescent girl nutrition. Okay. Now, we will take this particular article. Just a minute, guys. I hope, guys, that uh, the sound and uh, the video is clear. Now, amplify the subject of the adolescent girl's nutrition. We will take this particular article with respect to the GS paper number 2, issues related to the social justice, as well as GS paper number 2, the vulnerable sections of society, within the vulnerable section of society, the girl health, women, there we can take this particular article. Now, starting up with this particular article. So, basically guys, we see this particular thing that the adolescent girls, the girls in the age group of 14 to 16 or 17 years, the girls in this particular age group are the one which have been the most neglected one. The girls in this particular age, they face the problem of the school dropout, often they face the problem of child marriage, often their education, uh, school dropout, child marriage, then their nutrition is very big problem, anemia is very high. So we need to focus on the girls in this particular age bracket if India wants to reap the economic and demographic advantages. Now understand this particular thing, the adolescence that is the age of around 13, 14 year to 15, 16 or 17 years, this age is very much important, pivotal for the cognitive development. Now understand this thing, it is a second window of opportunity of growth. First window, first window of the growth is when a child grows till the 
three four years to the um, from from the growth till five or six years this is the first window of growth if the child will be given adequate nutrition if child is given adequate macro and micronutrient balanced diet the child's brain development will happen maximum and the second window of growth opens up in the adolescence and here see if there was any nutritional deficiency when the child was growing up find in the childhood then those nutri uh, deficiency it could be make could uh, they could be corrected in this particular stage now the adolescent health of the girls if it would be good then these women can also enter into the women's labor force now guys understand this thing in india right now just 25.1 percent of the women are the part of the female labor force participation rate and india's female labor force participation rate is very poor now you see this particular thing guys that we always talk about the concept of the demographic dividend now demographic dividend demography means something related to the population demographic dividend means the advantage that will come to a country because of the favorable population that is the young population now when we talk about the young population it is made up of both girls as well as boys but girls are not healthy so they will never be able to join the workforce and if they will not be able to join the workforce how the complete demographic dividends advantage we would be able to take so if we improve the health if we improve the nutrition of the girls in the adolescence these girls can join the workforce which is a very important economic contribution now when we talk about guys these adolescent girls they are vulnerable to undernutrition they are not given proper food anemia iron deficiency is there now basically these problems happen because of the onset of menstruation that starts at this particular point of time due as the menstruation will happen women they will be prone to these deficiencies they have to be given better nutrition according to the national family health survey 5 59.1 percent adolescent girls in india they are anemic around 60 percent girls are anemic iron deficiency is there now national family health survey 4 have also provided that most of the school going girls they are the underweight now why the girls are underweight it is because of the cultural norms many number of times the male are given the first preference in terms of the food if it has to be given so we need to have the gender neutral environment in the household gender neutral environment into the schools so that the girls are not discriminated in terms of um, they are not discriminated in terms of nutrition they are not discriminated in terms of food supplements all such kind of things now Moving on guys, so here we find this particular thing, if the poorly balanced diets are there, insufficient diet is there, it can lead to cognitive impairment, brain development will not happen and it will lead to low educational attainment, low educational attainment means skill development will not happen, they will not be able to join the workforce. They are also prone to many of the chronic disease, pregnancy complication and if the pregnancy complication disease will be there, then it will again put the family un on, under an economic burden okay so these are all the problems so what is the need of the hour what we need to do immediately so as we talk about the need of the hour the need of the hour is first to redefine to redefine the need of hour is uh, is not only to center around the good nutrition but also to adopt a life cycle approach now good nutrition is important but only good nutrition is not important life cycle approach it means that no girl should left behind and right from the birth of the girls their, their the birth of the girls their childhood their teenage their adolescence entire life cycle we need to identify that the problems that are being faced by the girls and at every step we need to provide a systemic intervention and this particular thing is not just the moral or ethical responsibility of india it is also the economic responsibility of india also because if they will be healthy they can join the workforce now guys recently what has happened the scheme for adolescent girls which focuses on the uh, nutrition education or uh, nutritional awareness reproductive awareness of the girls it has been merged with the portion 2.0 which focuses on the nutrition this is a good step because by the by the convergence of the schemes better implementation can happen but government should focus that accountability is also being given by the stakeholders that whether they are properly implementing the scheme or not. Then there is also the targeted schemes for the women that is the Rashtriya Kishore Swaste Karekaram. Now this is a scheme for building the awareness about the nutrition, educational program and all such kind of things. Okay. Then the next thing is that there needs to be the specific target on the social and behavioral communication. Now basically uh, basically guys understand this thing the girls when they grow 
okay they need to have reproductive awareness they need to have the uh, hygiene awareness they need to have awareness with respect to the nutrition okay and for that particular thing social and behavioral change communication is to be given you give them the communication you give them awareness in such way where they learn and also they change their habits they change their behavior okay such kind of things are to be focused upon then guys training of the health workers asha workers anganwadi workers is also very important for the implementation of this particular scheme so basically the adolescent girls nutrition their health their mental development is crucial for the growth of india not only a moral obligation but also an economically it will provide rich dividends to india now moving to the next article governors cannot indefinitely hold back the bills governors cannot indefinitely hold back the bills now this article will see with respect to the gs paper number 2 issues related to the polity issues related to the polity and within the polity the role of the governor now let's take what the article is talking about so basically guys if you are following the newspaper analysis regularly we have seen that in the past 6 months or 1 year there are a lot of controversies between the office of governor and the chief minister that has happened for example in tamil nadu <clears throat> what happened the governor while uh, delivering the motion of thanks speech dropped certain of the references okay which were agreed by the cabinet of the tamil nadu then in karnataka also there were the disputes uh, uh, so uh, um, then uh, basically in kerala also there have been certain issues so many states the controversies between the governor and chief minister is there and when we talk about the controversies one is the very big one that is that is often often legislature often the legislature has cleared the bill then that particular bill goes to the governor and governor neither clears the bill nor withdraws the assent to that particular bill governor is holding that particular bill in the pocket the governor is not taking any action on the bills so indefinitely the bills have their clearance have been postponed okay now guys when we talk about india basically the legislature at the level of state contains the governor it contains the legislative assembly however if it is a bicameral house then the legislative council vidhan sabha and vidhan parishad okay they will be there now we know this particular thing guys that it is provided very clearly in the constitution of india and even the supreme court has said that legislative assembly would be supreme governor governor has to act only the aid and advice of the council of minister and the chief minister without the aid and advice of the council of minister and chief minister governor cannot act so chief minister council of minister has been given more supremacy but there are the situations of the discretion under the situation of discretion governor can act as per his or her own understanding and when we talk about the governor as per article 163 sub clause 2 the matter of discretion cannot even be challenged into the court so if the governor has acted in the discretion that particular matter cannot be challenged in the court and what will lie in the zone of the discretion of the governor that particular thing would also be decided by the governor himself but there is judgment that is the shamsher singh versus state of punjab case of 1974 by the supreme court here supreme court has provided that a president or a governor can exercise their discretion independent of their ministers only when constitution expressly provides them okay when expressively it is provided by the constitution then only the governor can act as per their true discretion otherwise they cannot act now when we talk about the provision with respect to the passing of the bill we have article number 200 under article number 200 when a bill is passed by the legislature and when it is given to the governor governor can give the assent to that bill that agree to the bill he can withhold the assent says that i will not give the assent to the bill the bill will end there or can return the bill to the assembly now if the bill is returned to the assembly the house okay the legislative assembly has 6 months to decide whether they want uh, uh, they they have 6 months and after that they can return that particular bill to the governor if they have returned the bill next time the governor has to give the assent to the bill nothing more but then guys governor also has a discretion that governor can pass the bill to the president and can wait for the president and in this particular way what has happened governor has passed the maximum bill and have given the bills to the president so at the end of the day president is the one who will be acting on the aid and advice of the council of minister at the center so center government is being given interference in the state's matter 
There is this one judgment that is the Purushottam Nambu Deri versus State of Kerala judgment. In this judgment, basically the question was asked, the question was asked that what would happen if the bill has been passed by the Legislative Assembly, the bill has been given to the Governor and in meanwhile the Legislative Assembly dissolves. So basically, whether the bill will also lapse. So it was provided by the Supreme Court in this particular case that there is no time limit prescribed under Article 200 or 201 that within this time the Governor Article 200 or President Article 201 has to give the assent to bill. I told you already that when a bill is passed by the Legislative Assembly, the bill goes to the Governor. Governor can give it to the President also under Article 201. So under Article 201 and Article 200, the Supreme Court in this Purushottam judgment said okay, that there is no timeline. Okay. So even if the House is dissolved, the bill would not lapse. This had something that has been said. Now, though the constitution doesn't provide any time limit on the governor within which they have to pass the bill, but guys, it is a constitutionally not good thing that the governor are keeping the bill under hold for such a long period of time. As a constitutionally responsible authority, they need to give the clearance to the bill as early as possible and even Supreme Court has the, uh, uh, accepted this particular aspect. Fine. So, that is all guys about this particular article. I hope that you have understood it. And now moving to the next article. So, sorry, the main practice question for today. So, the main practice question for today it reads, tackling the complex issue of nutrition among adolescent girls is not just a health concern, but is also an investment in India's future. Discuss with the relevant examples. So, this will be a 10 marker question for GS paper number 2, health related issue. So, that is all about it. And guys, with this, we come to an end to the today's session. I hope guys that you have understood it. Thank you so much.